This is the story of Hedy Lamar, who was an icon during MGM's Golden Age. She starred in many films and was also said to be the inspiration for Snow White and Catwoman. But don't leave now if that doesn't hit the spot, because more than this, over 70 years ago she was also a scientist, who amazingly co-invented the workings of many things that are absolutely essential in our modern world. So what did she create? Hang around and you will be astounded. So what's the story? She was born Hedwig Eva Maria Kiesler in 1914 in Vienna, the only child of Gertrude, a Hungarian pianist and Emil Kiesler, an Austrian banker. As a child, she showed an interest in acting and was fascinated by theater and film. At the age of 12, she won a beauty contest in Vienna and also began to learn about technological inventions with her father, who would take her out on walks, explaining how devices functioned. While underage, she took acting classes in Vienna and forged a note from her mother allowing her to work at the largest Austrian film production company where she was hired as a script girl. She managed to get cast in two small roles in romantic comedies. She was brought to the attention of producer Max Reinhardt who cast her in a play entitled The Weaker Sex, and was so impressed with her that he brought her with him back to Berlin. There she met the Russian theater producer Alexis Granovsky, who cast her in his film The Trunks of Mr. O.F., starring Walter Abel and Peter Lorre. Grinowski moved to Paris, but Hedy Lamarr stayed in Berlin and was given the lead role in two more films. Her career went on hold in 1933 when she married Friedrich Mandel, a wealthy arms merchant. Mandel, however, was extremely controlling, objecting to her acting career and keeping her isolated in their castle. He had significant ties with both the Italian and Nazi governments, hosting lavish parties attended by dictators. Lamarr attended Mandel's business meetings, which sparked her interest in applied science. Their marriage became unbearable, leading Lamar to flee in 1937. This marked the end of her oppressive marriage and the beginning of her journey towards independence and scientific exploration. After moving to London in 1937, she met Louis B. Mayer, head of MGM, who was scouting for talent in Europe. Mayer persuaded her to change her name to Hedy Lamar to distance herself from her past and brought her to Hollywood in 1938, promoting her as the world's most beautiful woman. Often referred to as one of the most gorgeous and exotic of Hollywood's leading ladies, Lamar's first American film, Algiers, was a hit, creating a national sensation. She was often typecast as a glamorous seductress of exotic origin. Lamar starred in six successful films between 1941 and 1944 until her last film under her MGM contract, which was Her Highness and the Bellboy in 1945. Despite her glamorous screen image, Lamar felt lonely and homesick during these years. To relieve her boredom, she took up inventing, which later led to significant contributions in technology. Although Lamar had no formal training and was primarily self-taught, she invested her spare time in designing and drafting inventions, which included an improved traffic stoplight and a tablet that would dissolve in water to create a flavored carbonated drink. During the late 1930s, Lamar had attended arms deals with her then-husband Fritz Mandel. From the meetings, she learned that navies needed a way to guide a torpedo as it raced through the water. Radio control had been proposed. However, an enemy might be able to jam such a torpedo's guidance system and set it off course. When later discussing this with composer and pianist George Antile, he realized that this was similar to his past work in music with self-playing pianos. Together, they realized that radio signals could be changed using a similar mechanism. After research, they subsequently filed for a patent for a secret communication radio system and proposed it to the Navy. Regrettably, the Navy refused to accept the new technology during World War II. Not only did the invention come from a civilian, but it was complex and ahead of its time. It was however used for radio transmissions during the Cuban Missile Crisis and more importantly the technology laid the foundations for a broad range of radio communications technologies. Today their frequency hopping technology is used in countless devices. Then what did they invent? It made it possible to develop the technologies we all use every single day including Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, cordless phones, cell phones and smart TVs allowing us to communicate simultaneously on the same signal with mostly no interference. Unfortunately, many don't know about Hedy Lamarr's contributions to modern technology because she's mainly known as an actress. She failed to get the recognition she deserved for these accomplishments in her time, and she's still not often credited for this work today. She was finally honored in 1997, when she and Entile were jointly awarded the Pioneer Award by the Electronic Frontier Foundation. 
She was also the first woman to win the Invention Convention's Bobby Nash Spirit of Achievement Award and was posthumously inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame in 2014. Her film career began to decline in the 1950s and her last film was in 1958 and her 1966 autobiography, Ecstasy and Me, was a bestseller. She was married six times and adopted a son, James, in 1939 during her second marriage to Jean Markey. She went on to have two biological children, Denise in 1945 and Anthony in 1947 with her third husband, actor John Loder, who also adopted James. In her later years, she lived a reclusive life in Castleberry, a community just north of Orlando, Florida, where she died on January 19, 2000, at the age of 85. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, like and comment so I can keep you informed of my new videos and receive your feedback. Thank you and see you soon.